Poultry enterprises are tasked with production of safe and high quality poultry products, and quite often they have to do this in demanding conditions. So again, enzyme technology um, based on the use of proteases can provide benefits across the spectrum of what I would describe as better products, better processes, and better planet. So as such, uh, proteases can support, again, better nutrient utilization of raw materials, yielding improvements in growth performance, but also increase, again, that flexibility in relation to feed formulation by facilitating the use of alternative protein sources. Hello, everyone. Welcome to another episode of the Poultry Nutrition Black Belt Podcast, where we bring you the latest in poultry nutrition research and industry trends in approximately 10 minutes. Uh, my name is Sam Rocha. I'm an associate professor of poultry nutrition here at Auburn University and uh, joined uh, by a colleague uh, from uh, uh, outside of the U.S. today uh, uh, across the ocean uh, in Ireland, uh, Dr. Sarah Yamamoya. Um, she is uh, currently working at Cary uh, in the role of enzymes. Uh, and so uh, we look forward to hear her, her experience on enzyme development and application uh, in the poultry industry. So, uh, Sarah, thank you for joining and, and look forward to talking with you today. Thanks very much, Sam. Delighted to be here today. Yeah, sure. So as we get into it, uh, can you just give us a little bit about your background and what landed you in your current role and then what you're up to in, in that position? Yeah. So again, I'm, I'm based in Ireland, but I'm originally from Spain. So I'm a, an ag engineering graduate from my home university back at home. Uh, but then I, I decided to go overseas and I came to Ireland where I did my PhD in animal science. I was actually working in, in the peak nutrition department in, in one of the research centers here in Ireland. And and then subsequent to that, I moved to the Netherlands, where I worked for a period of time in slaughter feed research as a, as a poultry nutritionist. And then I've been working with Kerry for the last 18 years as global application director for the animal nutrition market, uh, where I'm really much uh, embedded in running the research program for our uh, enzyme portfolio and other technologies that we have for the animal nutrition market. Very good. No, so uh, broad experience that gives you a lot of context from the different uh, facets of, of developing a product. So, I mean, from that regard, I mean, we when we talk about developing enzymes, you know, we're talking about starting at the bench from biochemists all the way to the end user. So, can you talk a little about about that end to end innovation and how we apply that to enzymes and poultry nutrition? Absolutely. So, uh, I think that the concept of this end to end innovation refers First, to having a process that allows you maybe to take the conceptualization of an idea that addresses a market need right through its commercialization. And I think that when this concept is applied to a technology such as that of enzymes, which is at the core of the biotechnology space and the poultry industry, I think that there's two unique forces that combine to provide best-in-class solutions. So on one side, we have a very uh, naturally inquisitive and dynamic industry, that is the poultry industry where we're constantly challenged to improve, address, or implement modifications on how we, we feed our birds. Uh, we can include aspects related to price fluctuations of raw materials, also maybe sourcing of local ingredients to lower the dependency of, of imported goods, to maybe increasing the, res the resilience of animals to health disturbances through their nutrition. I think all of this provides a great opportunity to consider how a technology that is based on its specificity can deliver consistent benefits for poultry nutrition uh, and also taking into consideration the other aspect that I think is so relevant in this relationship between enzymology and poultry nutrition and that is the true scientific spirit of these two disciplines. Uh, science is at the core of the identification of enzymes and any strain development work. We can say the same about the development and upscaling of, of any processes to manufacture enzymes commercially and lastly, any enzymatic solution for the poultry industry should be backed up with industry-relevant efficacy studies that address its potential benefits in application. So I think is that when you have all these aspects considered under the same umbrella, and also maybe with consideration to any regulatory frame framework um, relatable to your region, um, is when we can truly talk about end-to-end -end innovation for enzymes in, in the poultry nutrition. Join us at the World Pork Expo in Des Moines, Iowa on June 4th through 5th, where Kerry's innovative feed technologies take center stage. You will discover how our animal performance solutions have been transforming global agribusiness in digestive performance and intestinal and microbiome health. Come explore Kerry's animal performance innovations for swine industry.
Yeah, absolutely. And, and you mentioned a lot of this um, is, is being applied when we in solving problems around ingredient variability, nutrient utilization, all of these things would ultimately kind of support the overall sustainability of the enzymes. And I, and I know that the enzymes play a, a huge role in that. So can you just expand a little bit on on how enzymes are key to the sustainability of a modern poultry production? Yeah, 100%. So I think that the potential contribution of enzymes to sustainability is multifaceted and probably I'm going to struggle to provide you with all the aspects where enzymes could play a role in more sustainable poultry uh, production. Um, however, maybe let me try to capture aspects uh, which are probably interrelated what I believe that there's greater impact made by the enzyme technology. So again, enzymes are naturally occurring catalysts. And as such, they are designed to improve the efficiency of the processes that they work at, right? So one example in poultry nutrition that resonates a lot with the work that we do are the benefits of enzymes in relation to nutrient utilization. And how um, their use contribute to improvements in feed efficiency. So again, we have a direct impact here in relation to a reduction in the input requirements in terms of feed to produce a kilogram of weight gain. That is a direct impact on sustainability. But I think that the other aspect in relation to how we can better use alternative raw materials um, is also essential in that journey towards a more sustainable production uh, of poultry. Uh, we, for example, have been working on this through collaborations in various geographies where nutritionists are interested in looking closer at ingredients available in the regions. So we have studied, for example, substrate presence in indigenous crops in the Andean region. Uh, we have also looked at a specific varieties of, uh, of rice in Asia. And also we continue to address various byproducts from the corn milling industry in North America. So all of this has consequences beyond just lowering the fee cost. I think it also addresses our social responsibility in supporting a more sustainable supply chain, whereby we can foster homegrown crops and also the work of farmers at local level. Um, I often imagine the contribution of enzymes around this piece uh, as an iceberg, right? So what we see above the surface level, maybe is the more well-known impact in terms of the nutritional value of feed and ingredients, but we're only starting to understand maybe the effects that enzymes may have on other aspects of poultry production. So again, you were to think about whether enzymes can play a role in improving animal resilience to production challenges through the generation, for example, of bioactives in situ. This could potentially have an impact on sustainability by reducing animal losses and optimizing the use of antibiotic-based strategies. Um, also, are there any other substrates that maybe we have not considered as potential targets for enzyme denaturation? And if so, do we have the right enzymes available to do the job or do we need to develop an enzyme tool with this specificity? Um, can we produce enzymes in a more sustainable way currently? So I think that it's coming to a point where with today's cutting edge technology that where even we have AI driving biotechnology platforms for rapid screening of multiple enzymes, we are positioned to develop the best fit for real life applications uh, with these sustainability targets in mind. No, I think that's a very good point, particularly when we talk about, uh, you know, different ingredients, local ingredients, uh, being able to convert things that, you know, maybe not the best quality for human grade uh, or, or, you know, animal feeds. Uh, we can improve those with with enzymes and it's certainly a, a huge application for that technology. And, and a lot of this is, is around protein, right? We're in the poultry business. We're trying to produce lean, healthy animal protein, wholesome protein. Uh, so that takes protein inputs um, to, to, to convert that. And so what are some of the constraints um, around protein utilization when we look at these different feedstuffs, different geographies uh, in your experience on that? Yeah, yeah. So again, protein is a key area of interest at the moment. Uh, and I think because I what I consider almost like the perfect protein storm conditions, um, mm -hmm. I think we're challenged with price and availability of protein-rich ingredients. Also at farm level, we have limited uh, strategies for the management and mitigation of disease, and maybe some inefficiencies in protein digestion might play a role in some of these uh, conditions. Consumers are also increasingly inquiring about the provenance of inputs into the food chain, and they are concerned about animal welfare. Uh, and finally, we owe to minimize impact to the environment. I mentioned it before, and this resonates specifically very well with the excretion of nitrogen in poultry production. So again, protein from many, many angles is become a nutrient of, of key interest. So what hinders the optimal utilization of this, this protein in, in our feeds? So first of all, is it, I suppose it's the source of protein. So is it protein from uh, animal or plant um, origin? 
How is it being processed? Is the presence of anti-nutritional factors in there that we have to consider? And the one that comes to mind always is trypsin inhibitors. They're well known for their anti-nutritional effects in, in relation to protein utilization. Another aspect that is more relatable to the animal is the age. So again, we can take the typical example of the maturity of the digestive tract. Uh, in relation to the absorption of peptides and, and amino acids, but also there could be a time span linked to an age or age dependent in relation to any potential indirect effects uh, related to maybe undesirable um, um, fermentation of protein in the hindgut. The last one is disease, you know, so disease states. So again, if there's coccidiosis or any other challenges affecting gut integrity, that will also interfere with protein utilization. And again, we can't separate any of these aspects. They're all interrelated. And as such, for example, we're looking at the moment at evaluating the effect of trypsin inhibitors uh, on coccidiosis and whether any prote uh, protease-based strategies can mitigate the impact on, on these in relation to protein utilization and poultry performance. Oh, uh, yeah. No, I think that's that's interesting. I mean, proteases are, are very exciting. Uh, we, we, we've got a, a long history of, of other enzymes, and, and it seems like the, the protein uh, proteases are in a kind of a dynamic state, and, and we're learning more. So, you know, can you just walk us through about what you see as a potential for proteases to support uh, ultimately sustainability and, and, and profitability for poultry producers? Yeah, so again, profitability, I suppose, is paramount, right? Um, poultry enterprises are tasked with production of safe and high quality poultry products and quite often they have to do this in demanding conditions. So again, enzyme technology um, based on the use of proteases can provide benefits across the spectrum of what I would describe as better products, better processes and better planet. So as such, uh, proteases can support, again, better nutrient utilization of raw materials in yielding improvements in growth performance, but also increase, again, that flexibility in relation to feed formulation by facilitating the use of alternative protein sources. So as part of our research, for example, we cap have captured cost savings up to 5% in feed formulations without any negative impact in, in growth performance using uh, proteases. Uh, we've also seen improvements in the quality of digestion. So again, um, we can reduce maybe undesired proteolytic fermentation and reduce nitro nitrogen excretion in the litter and to the environment. Similarly, we have been able to capture and confirm up to 8% reduction in ammonia nitrogen in the litter in broilers fed with proteases. And lastly, again, going back to that quality of the raw materials. Um, so again, we've been looking a little bit about trips and inhibitors. And with the use of proteases, we've been used to, we have been able to capture a 50% reduction in the activity of these trips and inhibitors. Um, I think it's all quite substantial, but I will kind of mention here as well that all of these aspects will uh, without doubt contribute to profitability and, and improve uh, or give a more favorable in income over fee costs. Um, however, I think I, I like to make the point here that, again, not all proteases or not all enzymes were created equal, so to speak. So again, I will kind of ask here for end users that they take their time to assess the technical information and the prevalence of this technology in order to facilitate their choice and the success, a successful implementation of such a valued uh, technology. Yeah, no, I, I think that makes a makes a lot of sense. And so, you know, looking at the different products that are available, the systems are, are very important. And with all that said, I mean, uh, what's your opinion on how we can get the best benefits from, from enzyme technology? Uh, that, that's out there today. Yeah, absolutely. That's a great question, Sam. So I think when it comes to it, I probably am the first one to put up the hand and say that enzymes could be tricky sometimes in terms of uh, their assessment and application. Not so because uh, of the technology itself, but sometimes because of the factors and the user recommendations that we need to consider when evaluating them. So as I mentioned earlier, enzymes are catalysts and as such, we have to provide them with the right conditions for them to be able to exert their function. Um, the typical example here is when we use enzymes uh, for their nutritional value, but maybe we use them on top of formulations that are already meeting nutrient recommendations. So if the animal is already receiving all their nutrients that they require from feed, adding an enzyme, whether it's a carbohydrate or protease or phytase, will provide very little value um, as these excess nutrients will not result in any growth performance above the genetic potential for the animal. So I would say think carefully about also the substrate present in your diet. You need to reach out to grab the right enzyme tool in the toolbox um, so that you can capture the value due to their specificity. But at the same time, consider that we do not feed poultry with any pure substrate. 
We provide them with a mixture of raw materials. Each of these provide a range of potential substrates for enzyme degradation. So again, consider maybe the value of various enzyme activities or multi-enzyme activities if you want to maximize the value of the enzyme technology as such. And also when you are assessing any enzyme, new enzyme into your formulation, think about what other enzymes do you use? Are they activities complementary? Are they overlapping? What considerations you need to take in relation to the potential nutrient uplift of that you may expect from a combination of activities? Um, and the last one I would say is like all I, that I re referred to earlier is consider the provenance of your enzymes. So understand their origin, think about thermostability to pelleting conditions. I mean, that is with, that's, a, that's a usual one. Think about the recommendations for use and also the efficacy of the data, um, hopefully generated through independently uh, controlled studies, also combination with field ex experiments, but again, request the science behind these products. I think I can speak for many of my colleagues in, in working in this enzyme animal nutrition space. I think we're very proud of the value that enzymes can bring into poultry production through improving our understanding on the mode of action and the benefits in, in feed formulations, growth performance and the environment. But I think we're also kind of looking forward to take on new challenges. Um, we're looking to make um, new enzyme developments as we continue the conversations with the poultry industry uh, for understanding where there may be inefficiencies um, that can be solved through this very interesting uh, technology. Oh, absolutely. That's, that's great insight. I mean, we it's, it's important to look for innovative products and have innovative products. And then ultimately, we still have to apply those, keeping in mind, you know, substrate and the nutrient requirement and the nutrient levels of the diet. So, uh, it's really, you know, we have to keep in mind the, the basics of nutrition, even with the most innovative products to really get the, the full benefit. So I think these are these are great points. And like you said, who knows what the next uh, substrate and target will be for, for these enzymes as we look at this, you know, more holistically as well. So absolutely. Well, hey, really appreciate uh, the, the insight, Sarah. This was a great conversation, and um, I'm sure uh, there's, the audience is going to take a lot away from this. And uh, we'll be looking for uh, more of what you and, and Carrie are, are coming out with to, to solve uh, you know issues for, for poultry producers. So thank you again for your time. That's great. Thank you for your time as well. I enjoyed the conversation. Uh, thanks to all of you for listening to another episode of the Poultry Nutrition Black Belt Podcast. Uh, if you enjoyed today's episode, please uh, like and subscribe so you'll uh, get to the next episode and I look forward to, to catching you then. Thank you. Hey everyone, we're always searching for the latest and greatest research to share each week. And if you have a poultry nutrition related research trial and would like to come on the show and talk about it and share it with us, feel free to email the research link, uh, the paper where we can find it or the abstract to hello at wisenetics.com. That's hello at wisenetics.com. And I look forward to hearing from you.